Okay, great. Okay, so um, next week, like I said, our, our um, association event is called Empowering Women Business Owners Like You. And we have a guest speaker. She's flying in from New York, Ms. Phil, Phyllis Hill Slater, who is the president of She's the president and founder of the organization. So I ask that you all take time to register to come to this event because she's bringing in her staff to talk about how she got started in her business and how she's been on Capitol Hill fighting for women's rights and uh, being able to get access to contracts and opportunities. So if you haven't gotten a flyer, feel free to take one. And I'll just kind of pass it I think it's several you already have signed up for. I want to make sure you all are here for that. And the proposal writing boot camp, it was scheduled to be this Friday, but I believe it's going to be postponed to a later date. So if you're still interested in that, there's a chance that you sign up for it, but it will be at a later date. It's going to be a one day boot camp instead of a two day boot camp. Okay? Um, what else do I need to tell you about? Oh, well, I don't know if you want to. Well, I'll, I'll let it be known. The next uh, small business connection series. It's already been scheduled. It will be May 23rd. So go ahead and save the date. We're going to announce it officially next week, but I'll just go ahead and let you know now. We already have agencies confirmed that are going to be here to help network and meet with you all. But we're going to kind of do a little twist on how we're going to do this event. It's not just you all coming in and meeting with the agencies and find out how to get these opportunities. Or how do we prepare you to be for how do we prepare you for that meeting with those agencies? So everybody around the city, they do these types of events, but no one is preparing members, business owners, and guests on how to go and meet with them. So take advantage of the opportunities. These Wednesday workshop classes are going to help you to prepare for that meeting, and we'll give more information about that next week. Are there any questions about anything so far? Okay. So, yes, ma'am. Oh, and I know the people online can't, can't hear. Oh, but, um, I'll repeat it. Okay. You will? Okay. Go so, ahead. Well, well I, I've got to bring my sheet. So the, the twist on this matchmaking event that we're doing is, you know, we're calling it how to get to second base with agencies and primes. And we're, like Cam said, we're going to have the preliminary meetings, Wednesday workshops that lead up to that. So they're going to be um, how to work on your pickup lines, you know, which is like conducting an introductory meeting. Um, online dating, so how you find those opportunities at the particular agencies, because you want to be able to, when you're in front of a city of Atlanta contracting officer, talk this opportunity that you have to repair whatever, you want to be talking about a specific opportunity and why your company is best for that, so they don't swipe right on you. <laughs> and then um, how to find closure. So if you don't want an opportunity, how to conduct a proper debrief and you know not go away bitter. <laughs> And angry after the breakup. So, but all of our Wednesday workshops are going to be leading up to that event. So make sure you sign up for that whole series so that um, we, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, we have a really great reputation with a lot of these agencies. Every time they come here, they're like, oh my goodness, this is the best prepared we've seen of these business owners. And we want to, we want to keep that up. So attend these workshops so that you can be prepared and represent yourself well and, of course, represent us well too. So they keep coming back. So tell them the title. I mean, you can tell them the title of the um, yeah. The how to get to the second base with primes and agencies. So we're going to take them all the way back. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
No. Oh, maybe you have to split the presentation. Yeah, you might just have to quit. Yeah, I am, and it's not working. <laughs> what? No. All right, we're gonna leave my beautiful picture up for a second. <laughs> I, I don't think. Yeah, I would have to go this route. Yeah, is there another? No, I don't think. That okay. Yet, so. Okay, great. It wasn't doing that at first. Thank you. Um, so I just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been working in this space with business development in a sense for over 15 years, and that's truly the business acquisition life stack, um, cycle. So that's from looking for opportunities, preparing opportunities to submitting opportunities. My background started with a small company, an 8A company in Northern Virginia. And you know, when you work with smaller companies, you wear multiple roles. So I was also working business development. I was also proposal management and doing whatever marketing for the company there was to do, um, which helped me along the way, working with other organizations, medium-sized organizations, as well as large-sized businesses. Currently, right now, I do work with a large business right here in the uh, Cindy, uh, city of Atlanta, where we are a um, health IT and health communications company. And of course, um, working with Nearest Communications, she works with us as well. And so it's a great partnership between the two companies. Myra, getting back to what you said, I definitely think pipelining and forecasting goes directly into preparing everyone for the, um, I call them the dog and pony shows. <laughs> the dog and pony shows with the agencies. Um, the one thing you want to ensure is that you know who's buying. So you want to ensure that you know what their forecasts look like. And so you're not going in there and say, hey, I can offer you everything, but you have a specific opportunity that you want to discuss. And have you done your research on that opportunity? So they, so now you're a credible source to them. So they know that you're prepared. All right. So the agenda, as you know, this is the second part series of the proposal writing, and this is more so how to find the contracts, then to get the solicitation, then to set yourself up to write. So um, selling a little bit of Kira's thunder where she had objectives, I normally never do objectives, but we'll go over some objectives for, that, um, for this training, as well as forecasting how to pipeline, who are your buyers, um, business intelligence to, uh, research tools to find the contracts, how to create the pipeline, and um, lastly, how to speak the government's language, well, understanding the contract award types and well as contract types. Any questions? All right, I do speak fast, so if you need me to slow down or if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. So some objectives for this training, um, understanding forecasting. Um, so we're just gonna baseline just a little bit, understanding what forecasting is understanding pipeline, um, learn how to forecast opportunities to improve your win rate, and then learn how to create and populate your own pipeline. And I think that's what really everyone wants to know, how to populate a pipeline. All right, so fun facts. The US government spent $4.11 trillion last year. That's a lot of money. So our, <laughs> that is definitely a lot of money. And the great thing about this is that you can get a piece of that pie. So this is all about today is how do you get a slice of that pie? So one thing about forecasting, truly forecasting is just a tool that we use to help you to budget, plan, and estimate for future growth. So you wanna think about what contracts happened in the past, what contracts are actually going on now, and then what is the government planning for the future? Any questions? All right. So what is pipelining? Pipelining really is a term to say, hey, now that I found all these contracts, how do I now, be, how do I save them and store them so it's easy for me to go back and find them? And it truly is a tool to use to just see a picture of all the contracts, if they're in the past, if they're in the um, present, and if they're in the future. So it truly is just a visual representation of the opportunities. And that's all pipelining truly is. So marketing campaign, who's buying? Um, part of uh, for government agencies, the departments and offices that are buying your goods and services. 
um, understanding that it's not just the federal government directly, it's also commercial clients that's buying your goods and services, um, federal, state, and local procurement opportunities, as well as federal, state, and local prime contractors. As small businesses, I always recommend working with prime contractors, they get government contracts, working with them, um, there, there may be a service or, or goods and services that you have that will help them to even meet their um, socioeconomic goals because large contractors, especially in the federal arena, um, the government has certain goals that they must hit, that meaning they must have a certain set aside, a certain amount of set aside small business opportunities, a certain set aside of women owned um, opportunities. And once the larger organizations win these contracts, they then must sub out a portion of that work to smaller organizations. So understanding that it's just not the federal government directly, it's the commercial clients and the prime companies are the larger companies that are that are getting these opportunities as well. So I suggest actually looking at some of the larger organizations and contracts that they have where there's a small piece of what you do a part of that contract and to be a sub with them and add that to your pipeline as well. All right, so once you know the organizations that's buying your goods and services, you wanna know the, who to reach out to within those organizations. A lot of the time it's the purchasing office, um, it's the program manager for that particular project. So and the great thing about purchasing officers, they typically have purchase cards. So understanding what they want, goods and services, when there's a solicitation out or just a need. And you can talk to them directly. They can purchase from you directly. It's a low threshold that they have on their spending, spending purchasing card, and they don't have to put out a solicitation for that bid. So it's great to know the agencies that you would like to work with, uh, the organizations or companies that you would like to work with, and who has a purchasing power. More so, who can spend the money? Um, and then whom specifically do you need uh, to contact? And once again, that's pretty much the contracting officer. Um, like I said, that could be the purchasing officer and the program managers. When you start looking at government contracts, one of the things you want to take into consideration is that there's a contracting officer, a contracting specialist. They typically are pretty much putting that bid together, but it's the program manager of that particular opportunity that's saying, hey, I have a need. So you really want to get in to be able to talk to them directly. And especially if you have a solution, um, they want widget A to be able to match widget B. You want to ensure that you have the solution for widget A to, ma to um, efficiently match <laughs> widget B. And you're saying, hey, I, ha I have a solution. I'm going to talk to you directly. And in that way, it allows you to help. Um, last week, Kira talked about ghosting. It allows you to help kind of ghost um, your, co your competitors, in a sense, because you've told the government, hey, I have a solution that will work. They then bake that into the solicitation. And it's easier for you because you understand and you have that solution. Comments, questions, concerns? All right. Fun fact, um, business professional services. So that's anything from like marketing, consultant, employment, like businesses, printing, publishing, pretty much everything in management consulting. Um, 37 million contracts last year. That's a lot of contracts out in the world. Um, and it, when you look at this, it seems like cities and states, 33.7% of, of, of that 37 million contracts were from cities and, um, cities and towns, excuse me. 28.5 um, of that went to state and universities. The other thing about pipelining and forecasting, it's who really has the dollars? Where are the dollars finding the dollars? And the great thing is we're gonna learn about that today. How do we get the dollars? <laughs> All right, so here are some business intelligence tools, we call these research tools, to help you find out how to find the money. So these are the, and all of them besides the last one are free tools. So it just takes you doing some research. Um, takes you dedicating some time every day to doing your research. So uh, federal business opportunities, we call this Fed Biz Ops. Um, that's the organization. So pretty much everybody in the federal government, if they're putting out a solicitation, it's going to be here. 
um, we're going to go, we're actually going to walk through these tools. So you understand how many people right now have a service business where you're providing like a consultant services. Okay. And how many people are providing like a goods, like a product? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go th walk through some exercises on how you can find the money in your, in, in your, um, your niche area. Um, the federal procurement data system. So this system is every place that there's a contract. If the government awarded a contract, all the dollars are in this system. So this is another place. So when we talked about past, present, and future, and when we when forecasting, Fed BizOps allows you to look at past opportunities, present opportunities. Now, um, the federal procurement data system that allows you to look at present opportunities. It allows you to look at what the government is paying for each contract currently at that moment. And then you can also look in the past and see what the government has paid. And the great thing about this, it links back to if that's a contract that you want, going out and doing the research on the contract and then adding that contract to your pipeline. And this is something that I'm going to pursue in the future. And General Service Administration, this is um, an organization where they have what's called different vehicles where you get a contract with them under under your specific cat your capability. And when what they would do is then they have a hub. So in this hub, in this data center, they then all of their future opportunities or something they would like to purchase from you because you've already been vetted. They have this hub where you can go in and now search for opportunities if it is if it directly meets your um, requirements. And the other way that we can find um, opportunities is through dedicated government agencies portals like the um, Department of Army have a portal right now. So when they release um, new solicitations, sometimes they will ask you to go into the portal to get the solicitation. And then sometimes even to submit your proposal back into the portal. So is um, one of, so keep that in mind. That's another tool set of how do you find the money. Um, and USSpending.gov. What I like about USSpending.gov, to me, that is a past and a present opportunity to find the money. The great thing about USSpending.gov is they're really the watchdog for us, the taxpayer. They're saying, hey, the government got this much of our tax money and how they're spending it. And a lot of that is through contracts and bids. So they have everything pretty much that the government touches and spends money on. And the great thing about a great thing about that is it allows you to go back and see what the government spent on. You can even go down to this, not, not only the federal level, you can go down to the state level, the county level um, to understand where your dollars are going, what contracts that the government have out there, um, and then link that back to how do you find that opportunity to put on your pipeline. And the, um, another thing is the OSDABOOS, and we call them the Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization. They I, so when I first started, the Osdevus would um, you could go to their office and they had like a forecast, and this is what they call their forecast. There's like the, here's all the opportunities the government is thinking about pur purchasing over the next year. Um, so it was like this little thick little booklet, and you would go through, and I would highlight a sticky note, and then do additional research, and then I was like, okay, th then we can add that to our pipeline. And nowadays, you just go into the government website, <laughs> click, search, and find opportunities that are most beneficial to you. So in our paperless technology society, you no longer have to go to the office. You can just go online and Google. Um, and then, and now understand, every tool that I just mentioned, they're free. They don't cost you anything. It just takes your time um, and understanding how to research and um, look for those opportunities. The last one I want to talk about is that there's several GovWin databases that that cost money, and I believe um, that GCA has a database right now where they have opportunities. Myra, what's the name of that database? Okay, the Gov Directions. Yes, so I would definitely get with Myra uh, Gov Directions um, to search for opportunities as well. Um, GovWin is one that I currently use.
Okay. Um, so I would okay. definitely audio connection restored. Okay. I would I would definitely say um, wait for GovWin. Um, just know all the other all the other tools I mentioned before. You just a little bit more on work. <laughs> You're gonna have to do a little bit more research because GovWin is a nice, it, it is a it is a pretty penny. But is it a it's a great tool to have. So once you start growing and expanding and contracts after contracts, um, and you have a dedicated team. I would suggest maybe definitely um, reinvesting into your business to ensure that you keep a healthy pipeline. And what I mean by healthy pipeline is once you find all of these opportunities, you, like I said, is a visual representation of all the contracts we, that's out there that match your um, your business. You want to keep a healthy pipeline in a sense of what's already current. So how many opportunities do you have in your pipeline that's current? How many opportunities that you have in your pipeline? That's probably a year out, which allows you to, if you need some specific um, certifications or you need a tool set that you can get them in over a year. And then what's your five your five year projection plan of your organization? So I was wanted to know where you want to take your organization and then how are these contracts going to help you get there once you win them. So you want to definitely keep what's called a healthy pipeline. All right, so I've talked enough. This is the interactive portion. <laughs> so I'm gonna go around the room and what I wanna do is um, utilize the tools based on what your company's um, capabilities are. So first we're gonna talk, we're gonna start with Fed, uh, Fed Biz Ops. So once again, like I said, this is a tool for the past, the present, um, and every now and then the future in the future only meaning maybe 30 days out so we're gonna go let's see if we can I was trying to show all my tabs worked earlier uh, and I don't know how to make this larger because I have a new laptop and it's fancy it is oh look at there Myra it is it's I told you it was fancy <laughs> It's fancy. All right, Miss Lady, your name is Sicily. Okay, Sicily. And what type of business do you have? Data analytics. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. And do you have an agency right now that you're looking into uh, to look for data analytics? Okay. So let's do this. Let's look. Um, you know what? We have been um, uh, probably not at the moment. We have small business with uh, healthcare industry, but not specifically about related. Mm -hmm. And I will say, as I'm um, working with a large organization, um, currently there was an opportunity released maybe a week ago that we're working and what we're noticing um although the, the opportunity in and of itself has nothing to do with data analytics there's a small portion of that contract that has data analytics so once again when i um was talking earlier say hey you know some of the larger companies that get the government contracts they're your customer because if we actually produce some data analytics, so if we did it, that's a hole, that's a gap that we have to fill in order to be able to execute that contract. So what I did was I, we're gonna go in the past. So I, looking for opportunity that's a year out, that it's already been awarded more than so, more than likely. I did total small business. So the great thing about Fed Biz Op is they have these drop down menus. So you can do a competitive 8A if you're an 8A company, emerging small business i would stay away from this one because this one is a little this this pool is a little short so um women-owned small business um an economically disadvantaged women-owned small business hub zone small business um if you're hbcu if you're partial small business a service disabled veteran owned small business so as you can see they pretty much cover <laughs> the gamut here um, and then what you can do is place of performance. If you want to do a specific region, say, hey, I don't want to really work outside of Georgia 
then you can look for what Georgia has um, as federal. This is only federal. This is not state and local, just federal. Um, but for this exercise, we're going to keep this open. And then contract type. Is it pre-solicitation? Which means they're just pretty much saying, hey, in about 30 days, we're going to release a solicitation. Oh, or here's one even better. Tomorrow, <laughs> we're going to release a solicitation for you. Um, a combined solicitation, which means a synopsis and a solicitation, really, which means like, okay, we're going to put this opportunity out. And oh, by the way, here's our opportunity. Um, sources saw it. I think this is some of the thing, another area where companies really don't take advantage of, and you should. The government, a lot of times, um, when they're going and they're when they're in their acquisition phase, they want to know what the market looks like. They want to do kind of surveillance of the landscape. So they'll say, "Hey, we'll put out a sources sought or request for information, um, and trying to get some capabilities of companies who can do this work." The great thing about VA, if it's two or more because of the Kingdom, I believe it's Kingdom Wear Act, if it's two or more veteran or uh, veteran disabled small businesses that can do the work, then they can't go full and open. They typically, if, I think it's outside of IT, they typically then have to have um, that set aside. So this is another tool to use because you can say, hey, there's the market looks good. The government says, oh, five small businesses with direct experience can go after this work. We're going to keep a small business because guess what? Then we get to keep our we get to meet our goals once um, we award this um, special notices. Sometimes if there's a contract out and it's, it's around like the expiration time and this is under justification and approval as well. Um, what they would do is they would say, hey, we bridged this contract. It was set to end. March 30th, what we did was we gave them a six month extension. So there could be a solicitation that you're looking, you're, you're like, I want this contract, it's on your pipeline and you can monitor if the solicitation is a night out, you can say, hey, well, did the government give them a bridge contract? And that bridge is say, just saying, hey, we're not, we really don't want to extend this or we can't extend it, but the solicitation is not ready for the streets. So we still need the work to be performed. So um, this is a way to track that as well. So we're going to just say any <laughs> and I just um, just so we don't get stove popped, I, piped, I just said data. Um, we're not going to pick an agency, but if I wanted to, I could do, let's see, DOD. I could type in, oh, don't want me to do DOD. Let's do. So I was going to do Department of Transportation. So as you start typing, it then populates and then you. One of the things about the government, you have the government agency, they have offices and they have multiple offices with inside of that, um, that agency. So one of the things while you're looking and deciding, okay, who is my customer? You wanna understand what many agencies they have inside of that overall department. And the best thing about that is every agency has an org chart. So you can go and look at their org chart and look at the agencies and say, OK, this is a target agency within this department that benefits me. But we're going to leave this open and we're just going to see and we're just going to hope and pray that it will give us. So now we're just going to do search. And let me know, because Myra told me I have touch screen. <laughs> All right. And this is just putting data in. So there's just, so here's the thing. You may not get a direct hit right off the top. So this is what I'm saying. This is research hours. You have to get dirty. <laughs> so you're going to have to go in and truly look and read. Um, and like I said, some of them may not fit. All right. And then there was one that I just saw right off the beginning. What is this one? P-M-E-A-S. Let's click on that. And we're going to open it up. And it's a source of thought. So remember, this is not a contract. This is just a way to get your capability out to the government without going to them directly or calling them and saying, hey, can I set up a meeting? This is a way for you to put together typically a five pager on why your business could do whatever work the government wants. So this is just a source of salt, but I wanted you to see how the opportunity looks. 
So it'll tell you the agency, it'll tell you the office. Remember, if you have your org chart, you can link it back and the location. Um, this is all military terms. Um, what I like about this is if you look at the right hand side under general information, it tells you that it's a source of site, SALT, um, that it was posted March 6th, that's early. Um, and then it'll tell you if they're gonna archive it. They'll tell you if it's a set aside. Um, right now, this is a total small business set aside. And then they give you the instructions on how to respond back to the opportunity. And I was looking for, and typically if there's documents, here, let me see. They'll have the linkage to the doc, the link to the document and no documents. Okay. And I'm going to actually go back here. And go to the bottom because I'm going to let you know they have 254 pages worth of stuff. <laughs> so yet again, yeah. Yeah, look, see, milk and dairy training equipment, books, a receptionist. Yeah. So as you can see, but you got to go through, you're going to have to go through. Okay. And then, um, so do you usually use keywords when you're doing this kind of research in FBO? Yes. Okay. I, um, it would, because FBO is so large. Yeah, FBO is so large. I would do keywords. Keywords. Um, let's let's use another one. Let's go home. All right. And I apologize because I know no names, but Miss Lady in the Green. How are you? Okay. In your company, real estate. Okay. And are you finding any government contracts and commercial? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then Miss Lady in the back. Okay, I'm just gonna pick on this side, and then yes, vending operations. Okay, and then you. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna pick you because I know staffing is gonna come up. <laughs> All right, so what I did was I actually, let me go back so you understand. I, so we have 90 days, so let's go to 365. We're gonna stop it. Oops, stop that right. All right, we're gonna keep the set aside. Let's do 8A. 8A, oh, we're gonna do 8A. We're gonna leave the type open. We're gonna leave the agency open, and then we're gonna do search. All right. Why the search? That's the question. Yes. The percentage through said is uh, are there numbers out there of where it says number of people that go to search for opportunities that actually win? Are there any numbers that actually Fed Biz Ops will not give you any numbers on who actually win the work. The only thing I could think of is US uh, spending. You can go and look at the agency um, to see the work. Yeah, that's the only thing that I can think of how you go back to the numbers. Yeah, because Fed Biz Office is not going to sit here and say, hey, oh, no worries. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's one for building maintenance support, first up. And this is a solicitation. So here's a great thing. So on the right, it has all the files that goes along with the solicitation. And then on the left, it has where it tells you when 
the original um, when they release the original solicitation and any changes and mods to the solicitation. So understanding this is real time. So this was back in February 5th, um, March 4th, it was changed. And it'll, if you click on it, it'll allow you to see what the changes were. There was an amendment, questions and answers to the solicitation. So once again, past, present. This is present real time. Um, if you wanted, as far as for pipelining, um, purposes, what you would want to do is look for opportunities that are were, that had already been re awarded. Yeah, so I have it 20, let's go 100 per page. Okay. Yep, so yeah, out of 10. So here's one for inf information system security support. Great thing about pipeline, once you have pipelining, so this is something, so say this was, um, this is actually an RFI, but let's say that this was an actual opportunity. You're like, hey, I wanna track this. That's where pipelining comes into play. You then have to gather the information and or bookmark this and say, hey, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna add this to my pipeline. Remember, pipeline is just a visual representation of all the opportunities that you've looked at. So you just add this to your pipeline. And that's how, Pretty much FBO works. Comments, questions, or concerns? So, um, can we search by, you know, like you told us in the beginning, the different search terms? Can we search by title and then search by the title and then the title and 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 the title um, you, do we want to stick with 8A or we want to stick with something else or we can leave it blank? Yep. So if we go to award type and just go to award notices and then we'll just keep everything open. Do you want a specific keyword? If we want to look at staffing. All right. Ooh. Like to spell staffing. Okay. And that's so three, um, 365, so that's a year. Um, and we're just looking at all war notices for staffing contracts. There you go. Gartner and Georgetown Lake staffing for gate attendant, temporary staffing services that was awarded for a services uh, service disabled veteran owned business back in, and that was posted on February 23rd, that, that award notice. Or, right. And it's however you want to um to pretty much base your pipeline. So if you want to have one year out to if you want to do them a year increments, you can. If you want to do them every five, one year, five year, I don't suggest going to 10 years. Um, the government used to do long contracts. They are no longer really doing long contracts. You pretty much get a five-year contract. That's one base year plus four one-year option years for your contracts. So, and this is like, a, yet again, like these are past opportunities. So you're thinking that, and you can go in and look at the award notice. And, and if it's a four or five year contract, knowing that this is going into your five year bucket on your pipeline. Um, if it's just a quick turn, 30 days, 60 days, maybe 90 days, you can look to put that into your one year bucket um, pipeline. Any other questions? No. So a solicitation is an actual document from the government saying, hey, we want to procure these services or goods from you, which meaning it's it's active, it's live. Typically the stage is RFI, we've done our market research. Okay, we know that there's companies out there that can do the work. Let's put a solicitation or a bid out on the street. And um, then there's a, then those companies then submit a proposal that they can do the work. And then the government goes into what they call their evaluation cycle to out of, let's say, five companies, which one is the best, low risk to us, 
and the dollar figure is right, and then we will award that contract to them. So I would say this, um, although you submit an RFI response or a sources response, if the government feels like they can't or it's not in their budget to put out a solicitation, they will not. Yeah, so your goal is more so as another opportunity to get, especially if that's an agency that you would like to work for, is to get your name out there. And then once you submit your RFI, if it's not in a blackout period where the government, because once the government puts out a solicitation, they typically don't speak to vendors. But um, if it's not in that blackout period, then you can call them and set up a meeting. And now they're familiar because you submitted a market, in a sense, a marketing data to them to get them acquainted with your company. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. So how long is that blackout period? Um, and I, tip, so anywhere I've sometimes once the solicitation drops and sometimes right maybe a month or two before that solicitation and I say drop meaning that solicitation is out it's open for the public um, yes so sometimes I you know sometimes I think like okay well once it's once it's out then we can't talk to you but maybe the week before I could have and then sometimes it's like one or two months out like if it's illegal and it's almost ready yeah we can't talk to you. Yeah, so it de it depends. Yeah, I wish I could say there's like a set window, but it just depends on that agency. Is there a certain number of days after that that is still considered blackout? After the so, so after it after it closes, you could go and talk to the government about that opportunity, but they're going to award it to a company and then they're going to move on. So. At that point, it's almost getting to have a conversation with them, not about that opportunity, but if you, especially if you know that's a reincurring service. So then within the next three or five years, like you've already um, built a relationship with them. Yeah, but once it closed, once that, once the opportunity is closed, they submit their proposals. Um, typically, yes, you can talk to the government about it. Um, yeah, but just understanding what at that what's relevant at that moment for you. All right, let's go back. So that's FedBizOps. Any questions on FedBizOps and how to look for past opportunities, how to look for present opportunities? Okay. So um, the federal procurement data system, someone asked if you can see how much a contractor is making um, from a contract that the government procured. So this is a good way to say you have a competitor. So I clicked here and you're gonna get the slides. So pretty much every contract that right now that the government has, they have to um, report the spending, how much they're paying per task order or per invoice. So every time, whatever um, the stipulations were in the contract, if the government says invoice me monthly, quarterly, or yearly, they're keeping contract. Uh, uh, um, they're keeping a list of those invoices and the dollars to the invoices. So I'm just going. So let's say Amazon. I, I did a test earlier. We want to know <laughs> Amazon, the company Amazon. Let's see, search for me. So there's multiple companies named Amazon. So we have Amazon Services. So for this particular this particular opportunity, we're going to go with Amazon Services. So this is what the government will do. So the award ID that is the contract the vendor name, the date signed, the NAICS code. So understanding you can search this by NAICS code as well. Um, the city, the state, and everything that's in blue is a link. So if you're looking for opportunities, this was for book services, I think this was like 2006. So they'll tell you that it was $5,367. Um, the contracting agency, the Department of State. So if you are a book retailer and you're like, who, who's buying my services or my goods? Department of State. 
uh, somebody that you want to add to your buyers list. So once we discussed earlier, your buyers list, you want to add them there. Okay, and I'm going to see if it will allow me, and it may not. I wanted to see if it would allow, it would take me to the solicitation, and it's not. So we're going to go back. And I just, I searched by company. Let's see if it'll let, uh, allow us to do this by goods. Let's see, books. I just typed in books. So you go to their search engine at the top. I just typed in books. So if one of you, if you have, um, if you provide books or services to get books, now you get to see who potentially are your buyers. Look for services. This was in 2017. The vendor name was mostly books. Now that's your competitor. They have the contract right now. If you're a book company, that's your competitor. And then it allows you to see how much it was obligated, $4,315. And the great thing about this, if you wanted to ghost them and say, okay, well, what kind of books are they selling? <laughs> it has their DUNS number. It has their, um, their vendor zip. So you can actually look up their DUNS number and say, hey, well, let's see if this will link us. Let's click here. And it looks like they only have one. They only have one. All right, and I think earlier when I did this, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's go back. So you want to click on mostly books. And that's it. It's only saying one. Um, let, but let's see. Let me see if I can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what it. Exactly. So I wanted to look up. <laughs> All right, so we purchased a company, my company purchased a company um, a couple of years ago, so, but their name falls back under us and it's Dyna International. Um, they do a lot of work with CDC. So actually you can see it here. So Dyna International, um, the contracting agency is CDC. It'll let you know for how much money that, that uh, task order was for. Um, it is actually under our, the global vendor name because we do have a parent company, it shows our parent company. So let's look, let's see if we click on Dyer International and that's what I wanted. So if the, con if the customer, this customer has like, um, or this contractor has more than um, one customer, it'll allow you, so now you get to see. So we have CDC, if you're looking on the right, where it says contracting agency, CDC, we have SS, um, FSS, and that's pretty much GSA with their uh, federal supply, um, federal services supply, I believe it is. And I may have that backwards. So that means when we talked about uh, GSA before, they have several vehicles that you wanna get on. So this lets us know that this money goes back to one of the vehicles that we actually hold for GSA. Yet again, another person or another agency that you would like to get on their vehicles because what they're doing now is that they're saying, hey, larger agency, Department of Transportation, we have this vehicle over here. You know, your contracting shop doesn't have to do the work. We'll do the work for you. We'll put the solicitation out for you. We'll award it for you. And then now you, now you have a license to go hunting under our vehicle. And as you can see, so if you have a company that you want or there's a, um, a company that you're saying, hey, they have all the work that I want to do then you can see exactly where their work is. And then that, that's an opportunity that you can then put on your pipeline. Yes. IDIQ. So is that a definite um, quantity? Yep. 
So IDIQ, meaning that it's a, it's a ceiling value. So we can order as many times for that good and services till we hit that, that ceiling value. So let's say it's a ceiling value of seven mil. Say it's a minimum of 1,000. So what the government will do sometimes is they'll say, hey, we're going to put this contract out. We have it um, baked in our budget for $7 million. We may not order $7 million worth of stuff, but we have it. So then it allows them to continue to order off of that contract until they hit that ceiling. So if that means one product or 10 products, they can order off of that contract. Um, you know, their services like we're a service contract and we have some IDIQ vehicles out. Yeah. Somebody else was going to ask a question. Yes. Yeah. So that's typically where you would go to the GSA, like um, the ID, the, the IDV ID. Um, I'm not sure if this is, it's not. So what you can do. Here, let me let me just write this down. So, and it's probably more so GSA 00 F 06 2 CA. Um, let's see if this will work for us. And then that means you have to do a little work. Let's go to Google because I like Google better than Bing. <laughs> GS 00 F 06 2 C A. So now Gov Tribe, they picked it up as a firm fixed price contract. Uh, here we go. Awarded to Diane International in the value of 366. That is not right. Mm. <laughs> Tells us the next code. All right. And Gives you a little bit of back information, combined dollars. I think this is, um, I think this is a um, IDIQ with multiple awards, meaning multiple companies um, can bid for contracts. I think they're lumping them all together. Yep, multiple award, <laughs> full and open. There's no set aside, and are they? And they're not telling me exactly what it was for, but. Understanding is you can then pull the number. If it doesn't link back to something, pull it over to Google and see if Google will pick it up for you to see if you can find out where it is. Yep. All right, let's see if we tap here. Nope, it will not let me go there. Okay. Is there another company we want to search? Let's say Lockheed Martin. Great thing about Lockheed Martin, they're a large organization. There's a lot of business with smaller companies. Please, please have them on your list. The top five contractors have them on your list because they do a lot of work with small businesses. You just have to become a vendor. So there's a vendor system that they have. It's not hard to get to um, become a vendor. Become a vendor with them because they still have allocations that they have to meet. And here we go, Lockheed Martin. And a lot of their work is going to be um, IDIQs, so they're going to have a larger vehicle, and they're going to be then there's task orders. So once you once you bid for the larger contract, then the government says, "Hey, you can now play in this arena," and then they'll issue out smaller contracts under there under that larger contract, which um, those proposals are a lot smaller, and it's more so I have the past performance in the background to do the work. And then, then from there, they issue out task orders. So a lot of Lockheed Martin work will be task order uh, driven opportunities. But if you're saying, hey, they do some of the work I, I want to do, and you want to know the agencies that they um, support, they support NOAA, they support the Social Security Administration, USDA. So you can follow the money yet again. It's understanding who you want to sell your service to because now they become the buyers. Now you can add that to your pipeline. Yes. Okay. I 
Coca-Cola is divided out into, we think of Coke as one big company. Um, they have, they used to have two companies. And the only reason I know this is because one of my girlfriends worked for them. So all of their their finance and some of their admin stuff was under one company name. And then all of their bottling services and distribution was under another name. Yeah. So typically and I'm not sure if they have like a parent Coke and then they have entities that I'm not sure. However, Google is our best friend. We can search Google and see how that um, how they're structured. The overall, yeah. yeah. And that's one thing a lot of people do, are not aware, let's say Lockheed Martin, we're gonna pick on them for a little bit, is that they have several companies um, that are baked into. So when they acquire companies, sometimes they'll leave them as a standalone. And sometimes what they will do is they'll bring them up into their fold. So there is a parent company and then smaller Lockheed Martin companies. So yeah, I would, um, if you know it's a large vendor, Definitely check the vin the global vendor name. Yeah. Okay. So how do you find out who would be the person you should connect with? Because you know they have different Exactly. So that would just take some. That's going to take some research. Um, that's not going to be here to tell you. <laughs> no, it's research. Lockheed. Yeah, that is truly trying to understand their organization. One of the things that they don't really post because they go after a multi billion dollar contracts, so they don't want their competitors to know at the same time. So that is truly un finding an end someone that has worked for Lockheed Martin, um, a smaller organization that's done work for Lockheed Martin that you may support. Um, that is true. Yeah, that's going to that Google. <laughs> Go to LinkedIn. That's another way. Go to LinkedIn and look who, who is supporting Lockheed Martin. Um, I think in LinkedIn, I don't use it that often as much as I should. But I think you, there's a search engine in LinkedIn where you can, can you search by organization? Yeah. So search by organization, look at their resume. I guess they have their like experience and then look at the experience. If it's like Social Security, like, all right, then, you know, that could possibly be an in into that particular unit of Lockheed Martin. So it truly is that research. Yep, you're going to do the research. But like I said, Google is your best friend. <laughs> Google is definitely your best friend. Once, but this like I said, this is a free tool, but you're going to do some work. Um, so the, the best thing is to know who you want to who you want to sell your products to and then start. And you may have to work backwards to get to where you need to go. All right. And let's go. So the federal agencies, um, they have their or their forecast. And on the right side, you see, Google is your new best friend. <laughs> because why I was like, oh, well, let me, I was searching uh, while I was doing the presentation, putting the presentation together. And I was like, let me just put an Ozdebu and see if I can just get a full fledged, um, uh, like, remember, I was telling you the book. I was like, maybe they have a PDF version and I can get the book. And then I was like, oh, well, you really, in a sense, you could still go to your Ozdebu, especially if it's an organization. And remember, if you want to do work with the Department of Transportation, they have an Ozdebu. If you want to do work with the Department of Treasury, they have the Ozdebu. If you want to do, um, if you want to do any work with most of the larger departments, they have a small business office that's going to be your advocate. So I would still reach out to them, know that you're so they know that you're there, and then they have special events and small business events, just like there's going to be an event here next week where you know they're going to be different um, organizations here that you can talk to them. They have small business events as well, so make sure you link in with your Ozdebu, and they can give you a better understanding of what's out there and where the money is as well. But for this one, I clicked on the Department of Transportation because I felt you can do a search again. 
All right. Because I have touch screen and I can enlarge. <laughs> okay. So you can search, and this is just for Department of Transportation. So if you're doing any work, you want to do work with construction work, any services with Department of um, Transportation, so you can go within the agency in the uh, Department of Transportation. Let's leave that open for right now. Competition type, 8A, 8A non, well, 8A competitive, 8A non-competitive. So almost like Fed Biz Ops, they have a drop down uh, for the sake of this. We're going to do a small business set aside. Um, we're just going to leave the value open and procurement category. This is for the Department of Transportation. So www.transportation.gov. And this is their OSDABU procurement forecast. Great thing about being a small business, there are set asides and they are full and open. If you have a service and you feel like, hey, I can rock with the big boys, by all means, go after the, the full and open opportunities as well. But if you want us to be the big fish in the small pond, I would stay with um, whatever your socioeconomic is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because like I said, the government has goals, so they do set aside these opportunities for you. So as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, we have business services, computer services, legal services, marketing services. <coughs> excuse me. Because I'm bat battling allergies, too. Um, the young lady in the back, I do apologize, I forgot your name, but you do graphics design. <coughs> so marketing services like graphic work, professional services, graphic design. Now I'm gonna pick on this middle side of the room. And your name? <laughs> yes. And you have a business? Okay. Charlene. Charlene. And what's the name of your business, Charlene? <coughs> we use support services and provide compliance management services. Okay. And the second table. Um, I mean, I'm a Getting started. Okay, cyber security. Um, I'm a big deal, and I kind of have two main skills, but primary is the advertising and revenue. Oh, wow. Okay. And the back table. Okay. Okay. All right. So I heard. <clears throat> let's go to marketing and advertisement services. Oh, there's none. I heard health services. None. So what we're going to do. Engineering. Okay. And RFP quarter. So the government uh, fiscal year starts October 1st. So they're gonna be a little bit off. So you're gonna have four quarters in a year and they go from, and they're, I think they're three quarter, they're three months per quarter. So it's October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So their uh, fiscal year ends September, is it 31st or 30th? 30th, yep. September 30th. So understand what the buying, what that buying window looks like. Because typically we think about fiscal year as starting January and the government fiscal year starts actually in October of the year. So, so we have um, FHWA and they have engineering services. So let's go to view full details. <clears throat> And I'm going to see the government works in acronyms. And I don't know what I wonder if that's the Federal Highway Association. I don't know. I just made that up. Not sure if that is. They didn't tell me, <clears throat> but they tell you who the procurement office is. They tell you the procurement category, engineering services, the estimated value of this opportunity. It's small business set aside. The RFP fiscal year 2019, the NAICS code. So you understand if that's directly aligned and know that you can have more than one NAICS code. They, um, the government will like you to have a primary NAICS code. I think right now we're up to 30 NAICS codes. 
So you can have more than one as long as it aligns to your true capabilities. So it gives you a description of the work. It actually gives you the contact name, their phone number. So all the information, once we start pipelining that you're gonna need, if you say, hey, this works for me, great. Save it, put that on your pipeline. And this is, so it says, it just says first quarter. And like I said, you have the name, the phone number, and the email address of the person at the federal government. So you can call them and say, hey, David, <laughs> how you doing? Looking at this opportunity, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about my company and what we can do for you for this opportunity. Yeah, so that's, that's when you have to put on your business development hat. <laughs> you actually got to sell your company. Now that you found the opportunity, you have to sell your company. Okay. Let's go back. And let's do let's do small business set aside. Let's do any procurement. We're gonna do any, and we are current. Oops, excuse me. Currently, we are in the second quarter. Okay. Here's what's going on. So this will actually be let's say present in a sense. So it tells you if it's computer related services and then there's one that says services and then there's construction oops construction work um oh we have a next let's see what's on the next page construction so let's go back to previous where we anyone here in construction i did not get around to this table construction okay oh see books mostly books <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna click on computer related services. Yes. In the Department of Transportation, you're gonna see a lot of construction and engineering um, contracts through them. So here's computer related services. <clears throat> the NAICS code, and they actually put the FBO link. Um, so let's see, Federal Highway. Ha, ah, it was close, Federal Highway Administration. <laughs> So risk management, like PMI, risk management, some more software tools, testing the environment. Is that something you do? Uh, yeah, All right. And look what they did for you. Contracts. So they have the title of the contract, they provided the contract number, and they provided the incumbent contractor. So if you feel like, hey, I'm not large enough to go out on my own, I just want a small piece, here are some companies that now you can say, you can market your, uh, your services to and get a smaller piece of the pie, but still a great piece. Yep. So this is something that's good that they did. And so I went to the Department of Transportation. Are you on there, Azibu? Okay. <clears throat> and let's go back. I did, I'm going to go back up. So we did uh, small business and second quarter. And then that came up. Do you have it? How did you get to that one place where you can just work? Oh, I just scrolled. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I just scrolled. Yep. Every now and then you'll look up and they've done the work for you. <laughs> okay. And then I wanted to click because they have the link to FBO. Remember, we were just at FBO. And here you go. Yeah. So this was actually second quarter. They changed this. So they're gonna issue a BPA and that's a blanket purchase agreement. And what that allows is like once you win that BPA, it allows the government to issue smaller ta uh, task orders. <clears throat> so it's if they have a ceiling, let's say their ceiling, ceiling value of that contract is, let's go with $500 million. 
That means for your services that's under this contract, they can order up until that many. So they'll put out smaller opportunities. Typically when it's a BPA, it's more, it's multiple award. So multiple companies. So what they do is narrow down that playing field just a little bit more. So maybe there's 10 companies out there that can do the work. They, you, all 10 companies submit a proposal, maybe five are awarded. They've just narrowed their field down. So now instead of competing against 10 companies for the um, task orders, you're only competing against five companies. So that <clears throat> helps you out a little bit. Um, maintenance of software systems and the information technology professional services. And the great thing about GovWin, <clears throat> they actually have the solicitation documents for you. And let's see, open. And this is just the amendment. I was hoping for the base solicitation. So I'm going to go back. Um, let's see, how do I go back? I got fancy and I was using the touch screen. <laughs> I was like, okay, how do we go back? So this was the original notice. And then over here were the files. You see on the right hand side where it says amendment one yeah. and then it has this link right here. That's the file. Yep. And then October. So they originally released this on October. <clears throat> excuse me. October 4th, which is first quarter and we did second quarter and then they updated. They wanted the vendors to submit their quotation to the response. And they updated this October 23rd. Yep. So the great thing is when you start doing forecasting and pipelining is that if it's an older RFP that you get to save that RFP, the government, <clears throat> please know this, and this is not talking bad about them. They don't work that hard. <laughs> So if it's if it's a five year opportunity or a three year opportunity, more than likely the solicitation is going to look the same the second and third time they release it. Now, there may be a couple of nuances that change, but for the most part, the scope of the work is going to stay the same. They may they may scale back or they may scale up on the scope of the work. But that scope of the work part of the solicitation allows you to really identify if your company can do the work. Or if there's a larger company that does the work and you want a smaller piece, and then, then that then goes into you in a sense of doing some more due diligence, adding that to your pipeline, but say, hey, I'm not going to prime. I need to be a sub. So then finding a sub, um, another company that's going to go after the work and you just be a partner to them for the work. But still add it to your pipeline. Okay, I want to get through all of them. <laughs> Let's see, we are going to be able to get to all of them. Okay, so that's using, that's just going through the Azibu. Search Azibu forecast. If you know the direct agency, if it's Department of Interior, if it's Department of Treasury, if it's Department of Defense, if it's Department, you get it, they're all the departments. <laughs> Azibu, and get the forecast and just comb through the forecast of your goods and services. They have the search modules there. So with, I just Google, if you just Google Ozdebu forecast, D-O-D, -D, yep. All right, so this opportunity, so say you have a GSA schedule, I suggest um, once you understand what your goods and services are, what you wanna sell to the government, definitely try to get a GSA schedule. That is, um, that's truly submitting a proposal to GSA for the goods and services you have. Um, once awarded, and the great thing, a lot of them are open, so you can submit a proposal at any time. You're not really going against anyone. You're just saying, hey, GSA, I have, because they're gonna ask you for past performance, and they're gonna ask you for invoices of the work that you've done. I have the capabilities to do the work, 
to get on the schedule, because really what that is is saying now we've narr narrowed down the playing field, and then there's constant um, smaller solicitations released through GSA. So I wanted to show you and how this works with GSA. And we're going to see, I tried to link in earlier. Well, you don't have a past performance, how do I suggest getting on the GSA schedule? As an individual, the work that you're providing or the services that you've provided, have you provided that with another company or another organization? <clears throat> the great thing about some, not all, some of the solicitations, when you start reading the part of the solicitation when it tells you what to provide back to the government and they talk about past performance, look and see if they have like workarounds in a sense of, hey, if your company, especially for law, small businesses, I see this sometimes, if your company, if you do not have the direct experience, but you worked for another company that had the direct experience, you can use that. And then sometimes what they'll do is like, if you're a small business and you don't have the past performance, we'll rate you as neutral. So it's not a ding against you. Um, however, do understand if there's other companies out there for that same opportunity and they have past performance, they can get outstanding, they can get good, they can get rated higher than you, but it's not a ding against you that you don't have the past performance because they understand that you are a small business and you're trying to grow your business too. Um, I can't say that's exactly true with GSA. That's something that you're going to have to go to their schedules. If you go to GSA, I think it's .gov. If you go there and there's a library and they have a list of schedules. So the schedules allow you to see um, what is directly aligned to your NAICS code in your capabilities. Yep. So here's one, um, GSA opportunities, um, public building. Um, no, so what, so initially what I did to get here was I did GSA forecast. And GSA, they have what's called an acquisition gateway. That is uh, their, their tool um, that they house all of their, their opportunities. So it's called acquisition gateway. So if you Google right now, acquisition gateway, it should bring, or GSA acquisition gateway, it should bring you here, yeah. <clears throat> And when I Googled this, and of course they're letting you know that you can always go to Fed Biz Ops right here to the right, let you know that you can always go back to Fed Biz Ops. The opportunities are listed in Fed Biz Ops. But here's another way to understand where the dollars are as well. And then there's different. So they tell you the listing ID, the organization, who's buying, the place of performance, where that organization is, a few who need to walk, work on site, um, the value, the contract type. A lot of these are task orders, because remember with GSA, you have to have the main vehicle first, but they then release multiple task orders. Um, they tell you the type of ward, total small business, some of them to be determined, the maximum value, and the next code associated with that. So if we wanted to, let's go to search. So they have agencies, they have Department of Labor, Department of Interior, and then GSA. <clears throat> the place of performance, I'm pretty sure everywhere they will have. Looks like United States, and then our outliers like Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Guam, pretty sure. And then they have one that's called non-USA. So if you wanna, I'm guessing if you wanna do work, OCONUS, um, acquisition strategy. So let's you pick from set aside. This one is a little bit small. Let's see if we can enlarge that one. Yeah, there we go. Oops. Yes. So GSA, um, they have contracts that are direct. So 8A stars, prime example. I'm not sure if 8A stars is under GSA, 
But prime example, 8A Stars is a contracting vehicle just for 8A companies. So it's another vehicle that you want and then they release um, smaller contracts underneath of that large vehicle. So 8A um, within GSA, they still have to meet their socioeconomic goals. It's just a larger opportunity. So some of the um, some of the contracts under GSA are small business set aside, meaning no large businesses can get that contract. So 8A, 8A stars, is that simply someone who has their 8A in GSA? Or is that a different schedule? It's a, it's a different schedule. I, don't want to be quoted that is GSA, um, but 8A stars is a vehicle of its own. Is its schedule of its own that you would like you should get if you have 8A? You have your 8A certification? Okay. It is a GSA GWAC? Okay. And I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to quote that. <laughs> for people, for people who are just 8A. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Myra. Um, I, yet again, I know because I work with a smaller company. Like I said, I started off working with an 8A company that, and we were makes sense now. It, it was an information technology consulting company, so we had GSA. Yeah, we had GSA stars. Which the great thing about GSA, um, not even GSA, but having your 8A certification, you can teach the purchasing officer, whoever's buying that, how to sole source opportunities directly to you. Um, it is a training on how they go about sole sourcing. So sometimes you don't need, don't no, don't release a solicitation. I can do the work. Here's here's how much it's gonna cost you. You can give that contract directly to me. Great thing about having your your 8A certification. Yep. Um, so you can search by NICS code as well. Who hasn't? Someone give me their NICS code real quick. Let's see if we can search. Let's see five four. Oh, five four one eight one right here mm -hmm. all right let's see Oop. dang it <laughs> all right there we go let's go all right do we have to say submit now okay it's already there let's take off i'm not sure what md is i'm not sure why okay here we go And now, let's see, let's scroll out. These are all the opportunities under that next code. Acquisition strategy, sole source 8A. And that's it. How about another next code, someone else? Okay, hold on, let's see. Nine, hold on, let's get down to the nines. Oh, no, nine, two. Nine, two, three, one, three, zero. Nine, two, three, one, three, one. Oh, stop. Nine, two, three, one, one, zero. Well, I have another five, okay. four, one, six, one. Let's go back up. How many of you guys are registered in SAMS? Okay, how many of you guys have a DUNS number? Cage code? Okay. You guys want to be registered to do work with the federal government? You want to be registered in SAMS? So make sure you have a DUNS number, cage code, so you can um, do work with the federal government. Five one, five four, or five one? Five four. Five four, five four one. All right. Six one one four. Five four. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna give you guys the Jeopardy music. Five four one six. All right. Six one four. 
six, <laughs> one, four. Ah, there we go. Now we're in business. Okay. And travel training solutions. Yep. Post payment audit services. So let's go to view details. <clears throat> So they give you a lot of details, which is great. Um, a lot of this information you're going to want on your pipeline. So we're going to get to pipeline here shortly on how to pipeline. Um, so, but it does say it's a service disabled veteran owned small business. So you want to make sure you read all of the specs to ensure that you qualify. The great thing, they have the point of contact name, their email address. I don't see a phone number. That's probably because they don't want you to call them but you can email them. <laughs> it does let you know that it's set aside under GSA. Um, this one was awarded uh, for transportation logistics, okay? And it lets you know the, the incumbent's name and the award contract vehicle. So then you can Google GSA-33F-G a015 and you can see what schedule that is under gsa so then once you understand what schedule if this is similar to the work you want to provide you can now know what schedules you have to get under gsa all right yep all right let's move we're right on a move all right, USspending.gov. This is truly is something in the past. Department of Defense, 77.9% out of the $208.3 billion spent last year. So this was as of September 20, um, excuse me, September 30th, 2018. That's a large number. So Department of Defense had 79.6. Let's just go ahead and say 80%. Um, I'm going to click here. Let's go to U.S. spending. This is where I got one of my fun facts. $4.11 trillion. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go Oops, go, 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 back up. So you understand how to use this database. Um, as soon as I go back up, where would you like to go, Myra? I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what you're searching for, but if you're trying to get data, I usually just go to the data server. Mm -hmm. So then what this allows you to do, um, if you want to go to fiscal year 2018, and let's do submit search. So, just let you know the award ID, the company. Look, Lockheed Martin already at the top. Boeing. <laughs> so, large organizations. The start date of that contract, the end date of that contract, the amount awarded, and then the awarding agency. Look, Department of Energy. Let me see. Can you guys see that? Just make this a little bit smaller. Department of Energy. Department of Defense. So use the search, and this is spending by the prime. And then of course they have grants, if anyone's looking for grants, but here's contracts. So you can do award type, it's a contracts, so let's do that. Agency, awarding agency. Department of State, Transportation, Veterans Affairs. Oops, go back. Labor, Justice, Treasury. So we can, and we can search by location. So you can do the country, the state, the county, congressional district, or you can just add the zip code. And then you can search by their DUNS number, the uh, recipient's DUNS number. 
If it's a business, a minority-owned business, a woman-owned business, a veteran-owned business, if it's the government, the ward amount, the NAICS code, so you can, and if it's a set-aside, 8A set-aside, Indian set -aside, so they have 19 set-asides. And if it was full and open, if it was a follow on work, if it was, if it's um, competitive, non competitive. So you have a lot that you can search. And this is understanding where the dollars are. So this is actually looking in the past on how to add this to your pipeline. Um, let's, because Bell Boeing Joint Project, let's click here. So I clicked actually on the contract number. So it tells you what a description is for aircraft, of course. <laughs> the period of performance, 11 years. This contract was for 11 years. Um, it tells you the place of performance, uh, the contract award type, and the contract pricing. So it was a fixed price incentive, which means you bid on a contract and you say, I'm going to charge you, Mr. Government, a million dollars to do all this work. They want you to do all that work for a million dollars. There's no negotiating. Um, and then they have the incentives, which probably means there's check-in gates. And if you meet at the check-in gates, if you are on schedule, then they'll give you an incentive, a fee to keep going. Yeah. So then it tells you, like, all of the funding resources. So these are modifications. Once they win the contract and how many times they send out a modification for the contract and how much that money entailed. And they have sub awards, none. Oh. So now you, you it tells you actually if you want to say you you were like, hey, you know, I want to do some work with them. They give you their DUNS number, um, their address. So if you want to go to Bell Boeing Joint Project Office and you want to do some work with them or you want to send them your capability statement or you want to find someone, I would suggest finding someone directly and having a conversation with them. All right. Uh, let's say we want to go, typically they're five-year contracts. Let's say we want to build our pipeline for 2020. Let's go for fiscal year 2015, because remember, we're going back and looking at the contracts. And let's do award type. We're going to do contracts only. We're going to go by recipient. We're going to do small business. Let's do minority owned business. And this, it is their type of set aside. Let's do 8A sole source. And we're going to search. So understanding you can actually get lost with doing all this research because <laughs> you want to try different ways um, and clicking mm -hmm. different categories to look for the work. And it's gathering my data. Let's hope it finds something. So that's the other thing. Once again, when we talked about buyers, who are you selling your goods and products to? Who's buying your good and pro goods and um, services? You want to make sure that you know that. And I think that's going to help you further along as you start looking for these contracts. You want to get agency specific in a sense. Like, okay, I want to work with uh, Department of Interior because they have, they're buying exactly what I'm selling. Um, and it's easier for you to do your searches once you know who's buying your goods and services. And this is still gathering my data. And I wonder if there's any data to gather. Nope. Okay, so we're gonna take off some of our filters. We're gonna take off minority on. Let's see if we can take that off. All right, we're gonna take off minority on and see. 
still gathering my data. What do we have? So we have fiscal, so we have uh, fiscal year 2015, all contracts, 8A sole source. Let's take off 8A sole source and let's do submit. See if that works. Still trying to gather. And I'm gonna take 8A sole source, okay. Huh, that's what it was. My filters. So here are some other opportunities as well. Department of Defense. Um, yet again, like I said, they give you the award, the company, the start date, the end date. Um, see where we have 2020. That may be an opportunity that we want to add to our pipeline. If it's the service that we provide, it's a firm fixed price. That was an aircraft. Unless anyone's building aircrafts, who's building aircrafts? Okay. <laughs> All right. So U.S. spending, like I said, is pretty much the watchdog for taxpayers understanding what the government is buying, where they're buying, where they're spending their money. All right. And then another one um, in in Gov Fast Track in that software system. What is the name of the system? that you guys use to look for opportunities? Gov Directions. So yes, definitely work with uh, GCA, with Gov Directions to be able to look for opportunities as well. Um, so right now, this is um, actually GovWin, which is another database system. Mind you, everything that I showed you before now, free of charge. <laughs> This one costs, I think, I believe the young lady said is about 12K a year. So once your business starts growing and expanding, definitely another tool to use that shows you uh, past opportunities, present opportunities, and future opportunities. All of this to add to your pipeline. For this uh, search, I just typed in healthcare and it comes up and has several search options. So it will allow you, and I think I did VA, VA opportunities. I searched by opportunities. Let's see if it'll let me go in. All right, let's see. And hope that's my password. Yes. All right. So it gives you, this is my dashboard, lets me know how many times I've searched for something, opportunities, if I save my searches. But we're gonna go over here to the search field and I'm gonna do, it's 12, that is correct. <laughs> and I just, I just put in VA opportunities and see it gives me this nice little, dashboard lets me know 1.7 billion dollars in total opportunities that they found and then the average opportunity is around three million dollars so i just got the nice little sign that my time is up <laughs> um can i have like two more minutes okay two more minutes okay so i want to say another fun fact where we're going to get Okay, now that you've gathered all this data and I tried to make it as interactive as possible, I do apologize if I'm running out of time. But how do you now take all that data and now keep it in a tool for you? There's companies out there that sell all these pipeline tools, they sell uh, forecasting tools. Good old Excel, everybody has Excel. Understanding what you wanna capture. I would say capture the opportunity name. So now in Excel, you're building out columns. The opportunity name, the solicitation number, if it's an old opportunity, remember past and present, they have solicitation numbers. Um, the RFP date, when is that RFP gonna be released? Um, you don't need proposal date. Um, typically that's when the proposal is due to the government. Um, estimated award date, when is the government planning on awarding this contract, the contract start date, the contract, um, what is your value? So if you're a prime 
if that contract is worth $7 million, $7 million goes to you. If you are a sub, how much of that pie are you going to get? And these are things that, that you don't need to have, but it would be nice to have. But what you should have is the contract value. How much is that contract worth to you? What type of contract? Is it single award? Is it full and open? Is it an 8 day contract? Um, if you're the prime, if you're a sub, the period of performance, is that a five-year deal, a three-year deal, a six-month deal? Um, if you know the incumbent on the contractor, because guess what? you got to outswim the incumbent. <laughs> um, and then your potential customer. Who's releasing that opportunity? Remember, we went over to the Department of Veterans Affairs. We talked about uh, the Federal Highway Association. Who does that? Who is that opportunity coming out from? Um, under, excuse me. And then the primary per point of contact: phone number, email address. So this is what initially you would want to have on your pipeline. So remember, all of the searches that we did, they had a little bubble where they have they gave you all that information add that to your pipeline. I would say first, just get it all there. Get it all on there. And then once you have it all on there, you can say, hey, here are my one-year deals. Here are my five-year deals. Here are my short-term three to six-month deals. And when I say the healthy pipeline, when you look at the, at the bottom of this, and this is one from 2016, it says that our estimated value was $763 million. Now, granted, we may not get all of that, but that's a healthy pipeline. So if we did win all of that. That's great in how we um, how we grow our business. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Yeah. So once once you and I would and I would honestly suggest, and I know I did it backwards, but I would honestly suggest building out your pipeline first in Excel. So once you start doing all your research you now know how to, um, what you need to pull and what you need to add to your pipeline. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I will email you the presentation, yes. Um, there's a column that says Capture Manager. My organization is a little bit bigger, so I don't have to do the work. We have capture managers who actually go out, they look at the opportunities and they go do all the client visits, they go talk to the customer, they do all of that. Small business, you're probably gonna be a capture manager. You're gonna be a business development person. You're gonna be that person, yeah. But more so than anything, I wanted you to see what a pipeline, just using Excel, it doesn't have to be pretty, but how do you capture all that data that we just searched? Yes. Yes. How, how um, receptive have you found of agencies or crimes? How, how open are they to receiving small businesses having those initial meetings? You know, it's not out on the street yet. Um, a lot of times, it's knowing where you fit in. Okay. Because um, as a smaller organization, a lot of times you come in with a specific service or product that they need to close their team. Um, or to close the gap on their opportunity. So for organizations, like larger organizations, if it's a large full and open contract, they're gonna have certain socioeconomic goals that they have to meet. So that is one foot in the door. Hey, I'm a 8 day women-owned, <laughs> veteran-owned company. You've checked three marks right there. They're gonna wanna talk to you, especially if, you have a goods and service that they need. Yeah. Um, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like the young lady, she was sitting here, she does data analytics. A lot of times data analytics is built into or baked into a larger opportunity. It's something small. They may not have a teaming partner. That's something to go in with and say, you know, hey, I'm a small business, woman-owned business, veteran-owned business, and I do data analytics. I understand that, hey, you're the incumbent for this opportunity. Or the great thing about some of the um, organizations like FedBizOps, there's a place in FedBizOps where it says interested vendors. 
And you can look and see if someone says, hey, I'm interested in going after this work. Great. Go set up, send them an email, set up a call with them saying, hey, I understand you're going after this work. There's a small section of that work that my company does. And we do that very well. And then, yeah, but you have to find out what's that commonality so you can get in and talk to them. Yep. Um, the last two, the last two two slides, excuse me, I do apologize. It's pretty much just about contract awards, understanding what a single award is, one solicitation, one company is gonna win. Multiple award, one solicitation, four, five, multiple companies are gonna win. IDIQ, we discussed that a little bit earlier. A BPA, same as the IDIQ, is a, a pretty much a larger contract saying, hey, multiple um, awardees, or it could be one awardees, it's just task order driven, we're gonna release little contracts throughout the life of this BPA. And then understanding task orders are typically smaller contracts under the larger um, vehicles. Uh, lastly, contract types. This is when you get to pricing, your um, understanding what is a firm fixed price. That pretty much says, hey, Mr. Government, all the work that you have under this solicitation, I'm gonna charge you $5 million, not a penny on there, not a penny over. And then that means you're gonna provide all the resources, tools and everything for $5 million. And even if it exceeds you $5 million, you can no longer charge the government because you said that you could do the work for $5 million. A cost plus, pretty much says, hey, this is how much it's going to be, how much it's going to cost. This is for all the tools, equipment, and the government then has to pay for that. Um, time and material, I'm going to provide the resources and the materials you're going to pay. So if I only work four hours, you're paying me for four hours plus the materials. If I work 100 hours, you're paying me 100 hours plus the materials. Which I just, okay. And that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. We made it through. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and have a good day online. All right, do you want me to close this out? How do I stop broadcasting? <laughs> I need everybody to sign up.